Question number one, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Transport. Did Cabinet consider a proposal for sealing roads in the Pipawai area as claimed by Dr Shane Retty? And if so, why has no funding for this work been announced? The Honourable Jerry Barley. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, I would expect the Opposition Transport spokesman to know that Cabinet does not make decisions on funding for specific local road projects. It is, however, it is, however, order. I would have thought reasonable for him to know that up to 60 per cent of local road funding does come from government through the National Land Transport Fund, uh, in which a uh, number of roads are included as lobbied for by MPs from all sides of the House. Oh, order. No, can I apologise to Mr Twyford? I have a point of order on Mark. And I apologise too, Mr Speaker, but I do really want to hear the, uh, the questions. Uh, you might have noticed that the sound system was completely different for when both members spoke, and I had trouble hearing Mr Twyford. Could you have a look at that? We'll have someone look at it, please. Order. We will certainly have a... I didn't notice anything wrong with the sound system. We'll certainly have technicians that are looking at it. Now the point's been raised by the member. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. As Transport Minister... Is he concerned that his parliamentary colleague told the people of Pipawai that he'd taken a proposal to Cabinet for the sealing of their roads and has thus misled the public on his transport policy? Uh, the Honourable Speaker, Speaker, on behalf of the uh, uh, Minister of Transport, uh, can I say that many MPs in this House approach Ministers of Transport, uh, lobbying them for roads in their uh, particular districts and then write letters to their constituents, or in the case of one person I could name, goes into the newspaper to say what a wonderful job they've done convincing Cabinet to support their particular road. That's what local MPs do, and that's why we expect Mark Osborne to be a very effective MP in the North. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. When he allocated $70 million to 10 Northland bridges recently, did he consider alternatives like sealing roads in places like Pipawai? Given that the Whangarei District Council says that dusty roads are linked with increased mortality and lung cancer. Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, I'd first point out to uh, my friend over there that, in fact, this is National Party policy that we will eventually see put into place because that's what governments are able to do. Suggestions that he makes otherwise are wrong. Mr Speaker, when it comes to the sealing of roads, uh, there is a $16 million project currently set up for Northland over the next three years uh, in accordance with the local roading programme sponsored by the Regional Roading Committee. And I think that is where you're going to see significant amounts of seal on what are currently dusty roads. Right, Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Is he aware that the 700 kilometres of unsealed road in the Whangarei District Council area has decreased by less than 1% over the last six years? And does he think that bullying locals to stop criticising the government will work, given that they've already had next to nothing from this government? Honourable Mr. Speaker, Jerry Barney, that is, those uh, two supplementaries. on behalf of the Minister of Transport, uh, Northland has had 40 per cent more funding from this government than it got from the last government. And what's more, Mr Speaker, when it comes to these dusty local roads, the priority that's put on them is put on by the regional council uh, through the uh, regional uh, transport programme and the draft land transport uh, uh, pro uh, plan, which Cabinet does consider. Supplementary question, Peter. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, can the Minister please confirm that if if doc, uh, Dr Retty has uh, contracted foot and mouth disease by his use of bully boy tactics against hard-working Northern order, Dairy order, Farm... Order! The member will resume his seat. That question is completely out of order. Point of order. Mr Speaker. Order! order no more order, than I can... Order! I have not... Order! I have not yet called the member. Mr Brownlee will sit down when I rise to my feet. That behaviour creates disorder. Now, there was a point of order raised by Mr Brownlee. I haven't heard it because I was asking him to resume his seat. But members on this side need to be aware that when a point of order is called, it will be heard in silence. Does the member have a legitimate... He does not. 
Point of order, Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, um, I respect that ruling. There was silence at the beginning of Mr Brownlee's point of order. It was when it was very clear that it was just a straight-out political attack that noise started order, on the side. No, there was noise throughout the point of order to the extent I couldn't hear any part of the point of order, but I was on my feet asking Mr Brownlee to resume his seat. Point of order, on Mark. Thank you, Mr. Point of orders are heard in silence. Mr. Uh, Mr Speaker, could you explain why you've ruled that question out of order? Because there is no ministerial responsibility for a Member of Parliament. And a member who's been here before, as Ron Mark has, should be well aware of that and not have to raise it as a point of order. Supplementary question, Peter Paderoni. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister. Will the Minister now pledge to help Far North District Council seal the 70 per cent of its local roads that are unsealed, along with the 1,100 kilometres plus those in Kaipara District that are similarly unsealed? If not, why not? Honourable Jerry Brownie. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, the record of this government is to increase funding, to have increased funding from the Far North by 40 per cent over the last terms of our government. What's more, Mr Speaker, the member should know that the local roads are the responsibility of the local council, the regional council, that they set the priorities for the funding, which has an up to 60 per cent subsidy provided by government. That subsidy will continue. The priority will continue to be set by the far north. And I tell you what, Mr Speaker, it won't matter how much someone called Winnie in a bago goes around promising the earth, it won't happen unless order. the funding's available. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Does he agree with Shane Retty in relation to the communication of his transport policies that during the by-election the people of Northland should keep quiet even if they have strong concerns about his transport policy and if they don't they'll get nothing and does he consider this stance a vote winner? Uh, Honourable Jerry Brownlee, uh, either of those two supplementary questions? On behalf of the uh, Minister of Transport, what I consider a vote winner is a continuation of the increases in funding for local roads provided by this government over the past seven years and looking forward to doing more in the future. Supplementary question, Peter Paraoni. Order of called Peter Paraoni. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Given that this all started with his bridges over troubled waters comment, Will the Minister at least pledge to help Far North District Council and Kaipara District Council to double lane the 778 bridges classed as local roads? If not, why not? Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, as I said before, uh, what has to happen in the Far North is the funding stream that this government has increased for, uh, to continue. And that will enable those local councils in their regional priorities to make those decisions. That is their responsibility. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. As Minister, is he concerned that the communication of his transport policies in Northland over recent weeks are being characterised locally and in the media as bribery, blackmail and now lying? Right. Mr Speaker. Honourable Jerry Brownlee. On behalf of the Minister of Transport, I have no responsibility whatsoever for the public utterances of candidates like Winston Peters or the forgotten Labor candidate who constantly make these scurrilous allegations. Supplementary question, Peter Paraoni. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what fate will befall Northland's iconic Derby and Joan Cody trees, given the Minister of Economic Development listed yesterday for double laning of the double of the Derby and Joan Cody Bridge by the double laning of the bridge named Derby and Joan. Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Well, Mr Speaker, this would be, the, on behalf of the Minister of Transport, this would be the first time that the Derby and Joan party has asked not to do something for Derby and Joan. <laughs> Mr Speaker, they are either for the bridge being double laned or they are not. Don't ask me to start backtracking on a policy that we have made as a party in this election and will do our best, if we are seeing Mr Osborne on this side of the House, to deliver on. Uh, Mr Speaker. Point order. Order. Point of order. Peter Paraoni. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I seek leave to table a spreadsheet provided to New Zealand First Research Unit by Kaipara District Council detailing the exact locations of the 454 stretches of roads that are unsealed. Order on the basis that it's information prepared by the Kaipara District Council, I'll put the leave and the House can decide its relevance. Leave a sort to table that particular table. Is there any objection? Can be tabled. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, Peter Pata only. I seek leave to also table the Infrastructure Committee of Far North District Council's Transport Strategy and Advocacy Plan of order, 14 order, August. Order, the document's been described. It'll be on a website and available to members, I assume. Oh. Well, not that I'm aware of. Well, <laughs> then. Order, order, I'm on my feet. The member will resume his. Sit down. It's important that members take the order. It's very important that members that are seeking leave to table documentation actually take the time to find those questions out because I'm going to be asking them and I don't want to see a, a, a member in a situation when he hasn't done that research. It will not be put. Mr. Speaker. Is this a further tabling of info? Is I this the last table a spreadsheet? Provided to New Zealand First Research Unit by Kaipara District Council detailing the exact locations of the 244 order, single order, lane bridges order, classed as local order. roads. The document's been described before I put the leave. Is there any other document from the Kaipara District Council the member intends to take leave to the table? Sir. Then I will put the leave and it will be over to the House. It's now a spreadsheet detailing information on the bridges under the control of Kaipara District Council. Is there any objection to it being tabled? There is none that can be tabled. Question number two, David Seymour. My question is to the Minister of Finance and reads as follows. 